All right. All right. So tonight we are going to start with something. We're not going to go right into arms. And the reason for that is we have so much more science that is teaching us about what's really happening with this fascia and how the fascia is just really just amazing. Just amazing. I'm not going to talk too, too much about it. I'm going to do a workshop in two weeks, though, really on the new science of fascia and how to move and how to work with it and why TTAP just works with it. There's not a whole lot different that we need to do, although some ways that we can work it to get even better results. So I thought I'd share just a little bit with you today before we get into right into the arms. So just putting your feet right under your hips. You can do a little knee bend, kind of drop the tail down a little bit. And we're going to start working with the hands because the hands are where the fascia lines start through the hands. And if you, how many of you do lots of repetitive things like this or knitting or typing or texting, right? Just about all of us do. And that can really create a lot of repetitive stress issues binding the, the fascia ends up getting really tight and then we can't get all the way into the muscles because the fascia is not sliding and gliding so we're going to start with the hands this is what i want you to do i'm going to come up just so you can see i want you to just start kind of moving your fingers and your wrists around Good. So I'm just kind of doing this. Now it's different. I don't want slow or sorry, fast, just doing this. It's not like that really. I want you to really like stretch your fingers, work so that you can feel in between the webbing, really feel it. And then I'm just going to start doing that as I'm kind of drawing some circles with my wrist and hands in towards the body. Now, if you've been doing a lot of this work today, really stretching, working the fingers, you might start to feel this right up the forearms and then go the other way. So you're really working. Spread those fingers wide. Good. Can you do piano fingers? <laughs> Actually, they're called finger fans. How about if you do it, can you do it this way with the palms up? And you notice that if you do it this way, what are you feeling? Then do it this way. And then just keep doing that straight through. I bet right about now you're really feeling that in your forearms. Good. All right. Now I'm going to take them out. I'm going to keep doing that. But I'm going to bring myself, my arms out a little bit. But notice I have my elbows out. So where I'm at, I'm going to put my shoulders down like the shoulder blades and almost feel like those elbows are kind of being held out by the shoulder blades. Good. And then we're going to just, you can keep doing that, but we're going to do some rotation at the elbow joints. So we're going to really open up a bit in these upper body joints. This is kind of like the Tin Man in, in Wizard of Oz, go the other way. We're gonna oil the joints. Do you guys, when you get up in the morning, do you feel kind of like the Tin Man? Need to oil those joints? Yes, that's what we're doing. And I'm seeing some of you already starting to yawn, which is such a cool thing, because it just shows that you're moving the energy, the stale energy out of your body. You're opening up all those places that have been really tight. Beautiful. All right. You had enough of that one? Yes. So now just take one arm and rotate back just a little bit. Go really gently. Feel what's happening up in your shoulders. So really get connected. Shoulder joints. Yeah, shoulder joints. Now I call these kind of long levers, meaning we've got the long, pretty straight arm, a little bend at the elbow. How about going the other way? Let's go the other way. Now notice how oh, the whole body starts to get into the act with that. Beautiful. All right, now bring the arms up to here. So we're going to work shoulders, a little bit of shorter levers, just the shoulder to the elbow. How about just pulling them in here? Isn't that a nice stretch across the shoulders? Press the shoulders down and elbows in, and then up and around, up and around. Good. Somebody asked me on Facebook whether or not the moves we're going to do tonight, does that also get into bra pudge? Well, when you start to work and really engage the lats, 
Yes, we've got to be able to open. I'm going to come here and go the other way. We have to be able to open up in that mid back between the shoulder blades. That's where the bra pudge will start to accumulate if we're not really working the fascia and the muscles and the lats in there. Beautiful. Now, let's do one at a time. Bring one elbow up by your hand and the other down. And then switch. And then switch. You can let the whole body react with this. Good. So as you go like this, notice you're stretching your sides and up and around because the body works as a whole. Doesn't that feel good? Oh, you might want to take some nice deep breaths in through the nose. And how about out through the mouth? Like you're blowing through a straw. And just think about when you're exhaling that and just getting rid of all that stale energy, that stale tension and stress. Beautiful. All right, start to feel a little better, yes? And then just drop it there. Good. Hands on your hips. We're just going to do a little bit now of some head, some head circles. Again, we want to release in here. So I'm just going to put my hands here. Just drop your head down and just take it around. Now, when you come back, don't drop it back. You want to like lift from the chin and over and drop it down, stretching out the fascia up in there. Because if that's tight, how are we going to get into those muscles and then switch the way the head is going. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you girls, but that just feels good to me. And exhale as you let it drop down. Inhale as you bring it back. Big inhale through the nose. Exhale it. All right, bring it back in. Nice work. And since when we're doing arms, we're really going to be working the whole body. Let's just put our hands on our backs like this. So you're kind of supporting yourself. We're going to bring, I'm going to bring my feet out about shoulder width apart, a little wider, a little bend to the knee. And we're going to do some waist rotations. So all you're going to do, you can come forward and then over to the side and you're supporting your back with your hands, press it back and over. So when I do this, I'm not moving my hips. I'm stretching out from the waist. Yeah, doesn't that feel lovely? Good. And again, as you go back, you can inhale. And then exhale as you come forward. And back. And forward. And go the other way. So now we're also engaging and warming up the fascia in the front and back of the body. Because with fascia, as you push on one end, something pops out on the other end. It all works together. Nice work, you guys. And then just come back up. And so then we might as well work a little on the hips, right? So now your hands are on your hips. And then just some hip circles. And can you do the hip circles, keeping your head kind of like that so it's very isolated? Very isolated, tucking it under and then go the other way. Yeah, so if you warm up all these different joints, then when you start to do your T-tap, now you're gonna really get into it. And I am just watching Harmony just yawn away. She is just working it, moving some of that tension and stress, moving the energy through the body. The yawns are beautiful. Love seeing yawns. Okay, you guys, let's pause there. Now, just notice, are you a little warm? Did you get a little bit warm? Yeah, isn't it wild? Just doing that can really warm you up a little bit. All right, so now let's do what you came to do, which is just do something with these arms, Renee. Okay, let's do it. So just bring in your feet. I'm going to put mine under my hips, bend in those knees. We'll get ourselves into the stance. Tailbone is dropped. Now, I have a new way of doing lifting ribs. You guys try to see if it works for you. Normally, I would kind of say, lift your ribs from here. And that definitely works. But I want you to try something else today. Pretend like right at the breastbone between right, right here, you're going to lift instead of straight up, though, 45 degrees. Feel it almost like it's coming from the back bottom of your bra and here, like somebody's pulling it like that. 
And just notice it will lift your ribs. And what does it do with your head? So just watch. You might even kind of want to just watch me for a second. So notice here, my head's a little bit forward, right? So if you lift from there, it really lifts the ribs and also allows you to bring your head right into alignment. Doesn't that feel good? It's not quite as tense as the other way. Nice, so you can do a little external rotation to those thighs, you've shifted back. Let's do a hand away and a hand away. Good, so you wanna just lift up a little bit and down. You wanna to get to a place for you where you start to feel some engagement here and in those lats. Good. Now, I like to say that you can do T-tap or you can do T-tap. My palms are forward. Fingers are together, stretching the thumbs. And what I mean by that is I can do this and I can do that. And it's that that's going to change your arms. You've got to engage the muscles. Nothing will happen if you don't. Just letting you know that, okay? So really work with me here. Press it down. Now, bear claw those fingers. For those that don't know, I think everybody does. You're just pulling those knuckles back right at that. Yep, right at the knuckle. Beautiful. And now I'm going to tell you to just bend 90 degrees right here. Keep the thumbs straight up. Good. Ribs are up. And now you're going to come in, do your fingertip. Bear claw, pull straight back. Bring it in. Back. Bring it in. One more time, bring it in, feel that stretch across the pecs in the back. Now take those thumbs and roll them all the way back. So now what's happening, we're rolling the shoulder joint back. Let's do it again, fingertip touch, fingertip touch back. Yes, I went fast, fingertip touch back, thumbs back, fingertip touch back. Good, now I just want everybody to check something. Drop your forearms slightly lower, wrist a little lower, stretch your thumbs. How many of you have ignored the thumbs? So you're pressing those um, knuckles, but stretch the thumbs. Outstanding. You guys dying yet? Anybody dying? <laughs> Good work. Okay, thank you. So elbows are pressing a little forward, twisting you back. Keep the elbows there. Give you another mitten and just come up. Good, stretch the thumbs. And then think, oh, ribs up just to a little bit lower than 90. And bring it up and bring it to here. Now, for those of you who are like, I really want to have beautiful arms for my sleeveless dresses. I have a dress, I've got a wedding, I've got a graduation, I've got a beach. Here's something you can do before you go out. As you're doing this, you'll look in the mirror. And as you do this, watch my arms, see how those muscles pump up. You pump those muscles up when you're in this position. Anybody else feeling it? Yes, I'm watching those sleeveless arms and you are pumping those muscles. I can see that stretch. Good work. Now we're going to do something combo. You're going to bring it up, come to here, press back. So it's an up, open, press back. If it's too much, Sean, you just, just bring this. It's okay. Some of us can't do it because this really requires some a um, little bit better um, uh, what am I trying to say? Flexibility in that shoulder joint. All right, you guys. Now take it straight down. Thumbs back right, right to the shoulder. Uh, how about little butterflies? Little butterflies. So give me a strong mitten on the hand. Stretch the thumbs. And what I like to do is I kind of straighten my legs just a little as I draw. And then I re-bend them and bring them right to the shoulder. Ribs up. Think girls up as you stretch those arms. Bring it back to the shoulder. Press it up as you stretch those arms. Nice. Bring it back to the shoulder. Two more. Good. You can take it down a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Lift the girls and bring it right back. Nice. How about one more? Stretch those arms out. Try to get them as straight as you can. No bend in the elbows. Beautiful. And forward. Do you need to shake it out? Let's shake it out for a minute. That's a lot, isn't it? So just shake it out. So now we're going to go in and do those Amy arms. How many of you have never done Amy arms? Anybody? No, you guys have all done them. All right, so you know what to do. We're going to stretch them back out. Give me a bear claw. Bring them above your shoulder just a little bit. Knuckles back, stretch the thumbs. And let's just take a moment to do a rotation under. And take those thumbs back. Rotation under. Bring them back. Bring those muscles out. Now you see why it was really important to start warming up that fascia 
Otherwise, you weren't ever even going to be able to get into the muscle because the fascia wouldn't be slipping and sliding. Good work. One more time. Rotate under, rotate up. Good. And then just palms forward, bring them up. So you're ready. We're going to do this to the count of, <laughs> I got you, Kate. I know. You just shake out whenever you need to. A little bit above the shoulder. So here we go to the count of hoedowns. One, two, three. Knuckles back and four. Now turn. And one, and two, and three, and four. Turn it again. It's one, and two, and three, and four. Turn, turn is one, and two, and three, and four. Turn again for two. You ready? Front, four, two. Turn, turn. It's down. Four twos again. It's front, four, two, and down. Four, two. You ready for singles? Hang in there. Front and down. Bring it down here, shake it out. Oh, yeah, shake it. I see Louise, she's shaking it all. Shake it all, girl. That looks great. Shake the hands out, you guys. Shake out your hands. Good. Flap them. Flap them. Flap them the other way. Good. Do some circles. Excellent. Shake, shake, because we're not done yet. Oh, we're not done yet. I know, I know. It's challenging. All right, let's bring it back up. Back to here. Good. Now, we're going to take those and we're going to turn all the way the other way so they're facing back. Now, you have two choices on this. I'm going to think, roll my shoulders back, beautiful, and then just start to bring those arms back behind you. Good. So, keeping the knees bent, tailbone tucks. It's really easy. Some of us tend to do this when we do that. So, you want to tuck the tailbone under, get that flat back. So I said you had two works. Once you're here, let me just start this. You're just going to do small, small, small little pulses in, reaching through the fingertips from the shoulder to the fingertips. Now, the other choice, just feel how that feels. The other choice you could do is let the shoulder joint roll forward, shoulder joint roll forward and try to do it. For some of us, we feel it better that way. I like it back. So if you're not sure, you can play with it. If it hurts in any way or you feel it in a negative way up there, beautiful. All right, now just turn so those palms are facing each other. Good, and tiny little pulses. So now you're gonna work those arms a different way. Good, can you lift them up a little higher? I know you don't want to, but boy, you'll feel it right in that tricep. That's your the little batty wing. Work it, work it, work it. Stretching it out. All right, let's just shake it. So tell me, show me, where did you feel that? Everybody point. Where did you feel it? Yes, this is a nasty little place to get to any other way, right? If you do bicep curls, that's okay. But does that stretch out in the back here? No. But let's do one more bunch of moves for the tricep. These are tricep kickbacks. So you're in the same position. I want you to bend the knees, but instead of tucking under, I want you to arch it out just a little bit and hinge on over just a little, right? So you kind of keep that back flat, thigh bones are out. Now, give yourself a bear claw, pull your elbows in close to your body. Good, tuck the chin a little so you want that spine in alignment. And now I just want you to think, pull your elbows back and squeeze between your shoulder blades. Can you feel that shoulder blade squeeze? Get your shoulder blades squeezing and then straighten, pause, and bring it back in. Squeeze between the shoulder blades, keep those elbows in and over. So hinge on over a little bit. Give me a little more hinge, Louise. Arch that back out. There you go. And stretch and in. Good. Reach and in. Reach and in. Give me two more. Reach and in. Last one reach and in now reach it and little up 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 give me five four three two one shake it out unless you want just a little bit more and if so lift it higher and press them in towards each other in six five four three two one you guys are animals shake it out <laughs> i think pretty much all of you went with me so good, so good. All right, let's give yourself a hug. So take the hands here on the outside. Good, 
Bend the knees, curl under, tuck your chin. Mm, that feels good. And then open them. Come up and arch. Oh, good work. And then bring them in, curl. And come up. And now we're going to do a move called Eagle Arms that I just find to be a great one to stretch all that out. So you just bring one arm here. The other goes under and around. Yeah, you got it, it's weird. And if you can't get all the way, that's fine, just wherever you can, even if it's just like this, it's perfect. Lift the arms up, hunch, and press those shoulders down. Good. That just is an amazing way to get into that shoulder up at the top and switch, switch, switch. Inhale, hunch those shoulders up and press them down. So I feel it the most when I press my shoulders down. Try to feel like I'm pulling my elbows away from my torso and then press them in towards each other. And that's just an amazing stretch. And then shake it all out. Ta-da! How do you guys feel? Did you work your arms? Very good, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording though.